Hello there guys and welcome back to Reborn with Michael Watson. Today I'm talking about, I have literally unlocked the secret to manifestation, the law of assumption and everything to do with creation. And it is the simplest but most hardest part of manifestation. It is about letting go. Why do you need to let go? Why is it the most important part of the manifestation journey? And how do we actually let go? Today, I'm going into a big, deep video on this, and I'm gonna make sure that you guys get to access it, and hopefully put it into practicality. Before I do that, please like, share, and subscribe. Comment down below if you find this video helpful. Also, please, guys, join my free Facebook group, The Healing Circle, which is a wonderful group of like-minded people. That's linked in the description. Right, let's get into this, guys. So the manifestation journey, how's it go? Where you have a thought, a desire, like a, a divine stirring with inside of you is that desire. That's it, a divine stirring inside of you is that desire, okay? So you have that desire. From that desire, you make sure to step forward into the world, uh, and then you have the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and then it arrives. This is what we know to be true. But in between all of that is a point of emptiness where sometimes we struggle. So we start to kind of question, is it coming? What's going to happen? But the truth is, is letting go is the key here. You see, there isn't an immediacy from thought to creation. There is a, always a timeline, there is a bridge of incidences, there is a sort of way that the universe has to manipulate itself to the most harmonious solution for all the co-creators out there for this to come to you. Now, we don't add power to this omnipotence, we don't add power to the divine. So what do we do in this moment when we must let go? I want to explain to you why we must let go, why is it so important, and this is it, because the fact of the matter is, is when you have a desire, there's an immediate moment where you start to envisage the end. That's why desire is a divine spark within that says, you can have more. You can have more. It's possible for you to have more. It is a divine spark from within. From that moment, you have a vision there, right? Now, if you're a conscious creator, you may get very relaxed. Relax your entire body, close your eyes, start to uh, just fall asleep with that imagery there. Then you're going to, whew, in that place of relaxation and non-resistance, you may visualize the end and dramatize it. But here's the thing, my friends. Here is the key. Letting go is the most important part because what happens is, is Joseph Murphy, like he would say, you feed your subconscious mind the image. And then it goes to work on the most harmonious, effortless way to bring it about. Now, if we think about it like that, it makes letting go seem quite simple, actually, because what we have to understand is if we keep intentionalizing and, and trying to script it and visualize it and do all these things, we're actually just adding more and more and more information into the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind stops the preparation and the flow because it goes, oh wait, I need to learn more about this thing that they want. And what we tend to do when we're getting frustrated is we tend to then implant the opposite into it. So we may go, you know, I want to manifest, um, you know, 10,000 a month. I want to manifest love. I want to manifest health. But every time it doesn't happen to my timeline, I start to question it and think of the end of a different thing. And what happens? It's like an acid and an alkaline coming together, you get a neutral substance. So nothing. So we go through this phase of nothingness. And then when we go into that nothingness, we tend to then add more of the negative suggestion. And then what do we get? It becomes worse. So someone who's going on their journey to manifest love ends up meeting a couple of people who are awful. Uh, someone who's trying to manifest wealth, they go on a journey and manifest uh, more debt or more trouble or big bill. Do you see what I mean? So the question is, is actually letting go in life is the most important thing. I talk about coming to peace a lot. We'll get into that in a moment, but this is the point here, right? I want to say to you this. Well, you have to do is you... You do something, you may take some action. You put something out into the world. Then it's your time to let it go. It's like having a child. When you have a child, 
you nurture it, you help it grow, you teach it what you want it, how you would like it to act and be. But after a while, it has to leave the nest and you can't keep pulling it back in. This is when we get unbalanced children. Think about your manifestation as a birth, as a child. You get an unbalanced creation because you keep trying to control it. You keep trying to manipulate it. After a while, you have to let it fly. So how do we let go? Well, let's put it this way. Once I have put something into the world, I often, you're going to have, naturally, because we're humans, we are going to have an idea of what we want and when we want it. Now, what you have to recognize is when it, if it doesn't go to that fruition, at that point is when you have a very wonderful gift because it's a chance for you to work on letting go now. For me, I'm, I'm not uh, sort of uh, ignorant enough to say to you guys, as soon as you've visualized it, let it go. Be gone with you. I say visualize it for seven nights, 10 nights, 14 nights, however long it feels good to do it. But after that, you must release. Here's what, here's what you do. And when you notice the inner turmoil of it not showing up in your life, you work with that inner turmoil by observing it. You become the observer, you hold it, release, relax. And then you just claim peace and harmony in your life. What you have to do after a while is also then stop thinking about it. Abraham Hicks was a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing for this because she would say, go general. Now for me, let's say for example, um, I want to manifest, you know, several clients, you know, or blah, 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 or I want to manifest, you know, in the future, I've got, I, I don't, I've got an idea to do an in-person event. You know, I want to manifest that going well. All I will do then is put it out there and now turn back to what I know, which is to deliver content, speak my truth and be authentic. After that, I have no, there's no power, no control. I let, leave it over to the divine. I don't add power to the omnipotent. You see, the more that you sort of try to create, the more that you question your faith in the omnipotent. And what does it say in the Bible to us? It says, what ye ask for in prayer and believe is already yours, so it shall be. So let's imagine if it was already yours, how would you feel? Well, you wouldn't be looking for it anymore, would you? You wouldn't be asking for it anymore. You would just be doing it. So why don't you act and start to do it as if? I had a client come up to me once and say, I want to be a millionaire for my business that helps uh, cultivate peace in the workforce or something like this, right? And uh, he goes to me, but you know, I don't really want to work hard. I don't really want to do this. And I said, uh, well, how would a, a CEO of a big training company would do? What would they do each day? Uh, would they be sitting in the house waiting for the manifestation to come? No, they would be sending emails, getting meetings, movement, joy. So you step into the world in that space. So just keep moving. Turn your mind away from what it is you've been trying to manifest for so long. If you're looking, if you've been trying to manifest love, stop. Just take your mind off the person for seven days and a week. You know, ten days. Think about other things. Think, notice other relationships. Bless them with love and forget about trying to manifest anything. Because if you had it, you wouldn't be thinking that way, would you? So it's like this. I've had a week where I've had to really work on some deep inner working. And I realize the more that you desire something, the more pain that you are going to create when it isn't there. So deal with the pain. Let go. It's not essential. It is meaningless right now because all you have is this moment. When you're in pain for your future thing, you're living 10 steps down the line still without it. That's why it feels painful. But stop noticing where you where it's not and notice what you have. So stay present. Look around you. Take it in. Drink in life. It is a real dream of a life that you've been gifted with. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you found it helpful, consider giving me a like and subscribe and a comment. Also, guys, for those of you who stayed to the end, I have my new membership where I go into really in-depth detail on these teachings. This video will be there, plus loads of others, plus ones that are never put onto YouTube. I have my monthly uploads, meditation station, and all these wonderful things. If it is something of interest to you, you can read about it. It is linked in the comments there. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you at the next one. Take care.